No nonsense gin drinking. All gin, no nonsense. Hello gin lovers and welcome back to what is a rather special edition of No Nonsense Gin Drinking with me, Bobby Freeman. Now you might be wondering and pondering to yourself, why on earth is he talking in this ridiculous, posh and rather well-to-do British accent? Well, I shall tell you, my friends, it is because today it gives me great pleasure to reveal to you that we have royalty on the show. My friends, gin lovers and subscribers from around the world, let me quite literally introduce you to Buckingham Palace Gin. That's right, gin lovers, gin all the way from the house of the bloody Queen. Don't say I never spoil you on this show, my friends. And first of all, but before we go on, let's just have another little look and appreciate the sheer beauty of that bottle because that look at it, it's got those 3D bits at the back and it's, oh, it's just absolutely stupendous. And to be honest, I suppose it had to be if it was a gin that's coming straight from Buckingham Palace. So I suggest, my friends, we don't mess around here. We get stuck right in and we find out what this gin is all about. A boot? Our rather popular Buckingham Palace gin. Do you know what? Do you know what? This doesn't feel right. I, I Sorry, I can't do it. I cannot read out uh, the information about a gin from Buckingham Palace dressed in these slovenly clothes. So I think we need a change. Here we go. Ah, now that's more like it. Our popular Buckingham Palace gin has a rather unique royal origin, with many of its citrus and herbal notes sourced from the botanicals gathered in Buckingham Palace gardens, don't you know? Lemon, verbena, hawthorn berries, mulberry leaves, and the tears of peasants we've had flogged in the scullery are among 12 botanicals. I should just be clear, I made that last one up are among the 12 botanicals hand-picked for the gin in the gardens of Buckingham Palace, which incidentally spans 16 hectares. Hectares? What on earth's a hectare? Give it us in acres, goddammit! We're British! And provides a habitat for 30 species of bird and over 250 species of wildflower. I say! Fetch the butler! Jolly good show, old chap! Meghan Markle will not be invited for tea. Right, my friends, let's crack on, shall we? Now, I just must, I must just mention here before I open the, uh, the old bottle up that um, I'm rather sort of annoyed with them straight away because this, they charged me, when I ordered this, they charged me £8.50 for delivery on this. And it took almost two weeks to arrive. Now, that, to me, is absolute madness. It usually costs about sort of two or three pounds, if that. On Amazon, it's free. So straight away, they have annoyed me. However, I shall cast all these aspersions aside and judge for the, 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 oh God, judge the gin for what it is. And what better way to make amends, my friends, than with an excellent and pleasing cork test. So it gives me great pleasure to announce the very first royal cork test. The royal cork test. So do we have a royal squeak? Oh, that's disappointing. No royal squeak. Okay, here we go. The royal full pull. Here we go. Royal full pull. <laughs> Don't know why that amused me. Here we go. Oh, it's not bad! Not at all bad! As, as a royal pull, I thought it might be a little bit more dignified, but I think that could stand up with the best of them. So well done for the uh, cork test, your majesty. So cork test over, let's get on to the old sniff test. Now, oh, a lovely glug glug sound. Now what are we expected to smell here? We've got lemon, verbena, hawthorn berries, never uh, had that experience that in a gym before, and mulberry leaves. I say it sounds absolutely frightfully posh, doesn't it? Oh, I do love to suckle on a mulberry leaf on a Sunday afternoon. What, what? So here we go. The nose is going in, so... Hmm. Smells okay. Not too bad. I'd say it just smells like gin, to be honest. There's nothing sort of making me do that. I haven't banged my head on the shelf, so that's always a good sign. So straight away, it's not, you know, sort of hugely sort of impressive. One more go. It, I must say, it does smell nice. Plenty of sort of lemon in there, a nicely sort of citrus balance, a little, actually, you know, not much spiciness. But uh, anyway, we know, we're not here for the sniffing, my friends, are we? We are here for the god damn tasting. So let us mud it up with the tonic. I've never sung that song before. I don't know where that came from. Glug, glug, glug. Oh, I might, I might have drowned it. It came out a bit keen there. The old tonic was very uh, sort of enthusiastic and it's sort of uh, leaping forth from the bottle. So my friends, I, I can always adjust it later. Don't worry about it. I am 
in control no matter what it may look like. So here we go. I, I'm very proud to say as an Englishman on my humble little channel here in my studio, in my garage in South East London, I say to my friends, Buckingham Palace Gin. Cheers. Well, there's an anticlimax if ever I found one. <laughs> hmm, 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 and hmm again. What ABV is this? It's 42, so it's about what we usually expect from London Dries. And I have to say, I'm not particularly blown away by it. To me, I, it had to be something special. I think they had it with the bottle. The bottle, absolutely no question about it. That is quite spectacular. And, and let's face it, it's gonna fly off the showers, whatever. But to be honest, it's, it's actually extremely kind of candy sweet. It's very, it's very, there's, I'll tell you what, very, very little juniper in there at all. And we all know if it ain't juniper, it ain't gin. And I'm not getting that at all. I, it's not very complex. I feel it's a very shallow sort of bunch of flavors. There's not much going on. You just get one like boom. Uh, you don't get much on the on the start when you just touch your tongue. You get it when it sort of comes into your mouth. That's when you get this sort of a kind of a cloud of sweetness. It is quite lemony, lemony. I always trouble with that word. It is quite lemony. Um, but to be honest, it's more kind of a sort of a sweet sting, and then this real sort of intoxicating sweetness, which to me that's the sort of the artificially tasting bit. And then it just goes poof, to nothing. There's no lingering aftertaste. Maybe a tiny sort of sizzle of lemony, lemony, <laughs> lemoniness. But to be honest, not much else. And I have to say, look, I've gone to all the effort here. Look at all this. I look like a right chump now because I, <laughs> I thought this was going to be exceptional. Sometimes you just, it sounds stupid, but you look at the bottle and you think, you know what? That's going to be awesome. But I do wonder if perhaps they thought to themselves, you know, We've got a, a great bit of marketing here. The marketing's already done. People are going to buy this. Let's just stick any old shit in there. Let's not bother taking any time, uh, sort of uh, making it interesting, Jim, with depth of flavours. Let's just whack something standing in there. Don't take too long, uh, sort of messing about with botanicals. Just, just stick it in a nice bottle and people will buy it. And I'm sure they will. And to me, that's not good enough, really. It's not good enough. It's not, I always talk about when you can taste when someone has poured poured their heart and soul. That's becoming a bit of a catchphrase on this show now, but I, I'm not gonna apologize for it because it's true, it's totally true. Look at like the number three gin over there or Steve the bartender's gin or what's another one? At Mason's gin over there, absolutely excellent. Obviously Beef Eater, Brokers, the Melbourne Gin Company. You can just taste, you can almost taste the hours and the time it was spent, countless sort of hours whiling away in the distillery to make something truly special, truly special. I think that's a mixture of special and exceptional. And it really does pay off and you can tell it. But for me, that just leaves me kind of cold. I wouldn't even say it's mm, a nice gin. I'd say it's a less than average gin, to be honest. I wouldn't be surprised to taste something like that on, uh, you know, um, off the shelf at a supermarket, uh, sort of their own budget gin. Where in actual fact, some of those budget gins from the supermarkets are exceptional, like the good old Hampstead gin over here from uh, the supermarket Aldi or Lidl, I can't remember, one of those two. That, my friends, was about nine pounds. And uh, as I say, a budget gin. And I would say most definitely it is a better and more enjoyable gin than that one. So what does that say? <sighs> Disappointing. So then you're probably wondering what the price is and you're probably thinking it's quite expensive. And yes, I'm afraid it is my friends. You are right. It's going to cost you 40 pounds over here. I don't know if it's available worldwide yet, but I imagine it probably will be because people are going to lap this stuff up. If you're in America, it's going to cost you 50. Well, that's the, I don't know what it will cost you over there, but the equivalent, 40 pounds is the equivalent, $53 and uh, 44 euros. And as we know, I don't like to spend more than 30 pounds. I'd take that up to 40 if it's for the lesser known distilleries. To be honest, these guys are just cashing in on that, in my opinion. I'm sorry, you know, I, you know, I like to be patriotic and everything, and I would have loved this to have been a brilliant ambassador for my country and for my gin channel. But I have to say, ah, uh, 
I would, it, it's, I'm sure people are going to, you know, sort of buy loads of these for presents for people at Christmas, and it will make a lovely present to open and have a look at, but when it comes down to it, I think you'll find the majority of these bottles are still going to be sat full on the shelf next Christmas and for many Christmases to come. So gin lovers, uh, you know what, I, I, I often say I don't like to make negative videos, I don't think it makes great viewing, but I have always promised to be honest to every man jack of you, because if I'm not on this, what's the point of me being here and what's the point in you guys watching? And this is an honest opinion, so I'm sorry if you found it a little bit sort of uh, negative, but you know, like I say, I speaketh the truth. If, however, you did find it useful and entertaining to any degree and you know, appreciate the fact that I've dressed up like this, please uh, subscribe to my channel and press the little like button on the video and of course the little bell icon so you get notified when all my new videos come out. And if you feel so compelled to support the show like my lovely patrons do, then head over to my Patreon page as well or click the join button down there below the video. But until next time, my esteemed gin lovers and viewers, you all know the drill by now. Take care, stay safe, thank you to all my patrons, it's going to be a big one today, and keep drinking the gin.